everybody I have another story time for you guys I had a request on this other video that I done um, with a book illustrated by Chihiro Iwasaki so she was a Japanese um, children's book illustrator and they even have a museum in Japan um, dedicated to her and her work and um, I would love to go there sometime but I think her work is fabulous and so in this story time for illustrators um, I just wanted to share this book. Um, the person who commented, they said, oh, her books are out of print. Yeah, because she um, uh, was an illustrator actively in the 1950s. What I find fascinating about her work, it doesn't to me look like it's from the 1950s. I get really excited when I see her work because as a children's book illustrator, she's hitting all those check, check marks for me. Like, this cover for The Little Mermaid, I mean, you look at the emotion and the feeling that is going through, like, I, I can just look at that, The Little Mermaid's face, and I can just feel, like, how deep of, uh, you know, decision she's making, and so it's beautiful, and then the way that the white space, okay, so t let's talk about, like, when in another video I had, I said, you know, find art that you like, you know, illustrators are doing that. And I know that people will be like, oh, you can disagree or agree about this. But I, another illustrator I really admire is Elizabeth Berger. If you look at her work and then you see how she's using watercolors there to me, it seems like she may have looked at, I mean, I'm not saying I know Elizabeth Berger or talked to her about this or seen anything written about this, but I feel like looking at uh, Iwasaki's illustration work there might have been some influence to Lisbeth Sverger's work but fantastic I love the rough kind of brushwork and at the time this was very innovative you know nobody was really really doing it like this so she goes to a darker value line work on her hands so the hands pop out first love that I got this used I think I got it off of eBay just gorgeous illustrations these are beautiful and what i like and also liz Verger is kind of like when i see her work and the white space look at that great use of like positive negative space how the illustration flows together love her line work her colors just really gorgeous I love all this, the bleeding. There's a lot of text in this book. When it, you look up, like, um, if you ever uh, teach and stuff like that, K through 12, they have something called Accelerated Reader. And I was really surprised, like, they have a Lexile level, like what level that kids should be reading. And they consider Hans Christian Andersen to be more of, like, middle grade. Oh, look at this. This is the full spread. Is this not gorgeous, guys? Her own depiction of that, of the Witch of the Sea. Just, just gorgeous. And I love, I mean, I feel like whoever printed these probably got close to what her textures were. And look at this. Look at that. I mean, I don't know that you guys can see this, but they're gorgeous. And that's why I see, I feel like I see that influence from, uh, in Elizabeth Berger's work. Some of the same textural elements. Just all that white space. It's so lovely. Gosh, the emotion in this one. Not, not gorgeous. Not a lot of color. And so this is the... She's removed the color out of this character. But here on the other side, full color. It's like that feeling like right off the bat. You read it. There's no color. There's color over here. They're bright and joyful. She is, you know, immediately you see sad. Alone. That separation using the gutter wonderful and constantly how that separation between these two characters like I don't even have to read the text I love how she simplifies the stained glass and that that is that's beautiful like you don't have to do every single line or detail and that's something that I feel like I want to do more in my art artwork I don't want to render everything I'm kind of kind of over that <laughs> so everybody's different but that's why I gravitate to this work it's beautiful and to think she was doing this in the 1950s 60s and 
goodness is beautiful again. Look at that. And that's the final page. But, um, picture book studio. So anyways, they're the ones who, um, I guess, re uh, printed this or maybe you did reprints. I, they also sent, and I got really lucky, this was stuffed inside the book. I bought this used. I think I got it off of eBay. But then look at this. Look at this, how gorgeous this is. These are books by older illustrators. I love this little catalog. It's just so, so cute. But, you know, makes me want to go buy them. But anyways, um, for those of you who... You know, you can't find this book, try and look on eBay, um, you know, if you do a little deep diving. Some of what I found is, like, sometimes the prices are really high. I totally get that. Nobody wants to pay $80 for a children. I got really lucky. I did not pay $80. Uh, I don't have any $80 children's books. I just will tend to buy them used. Sometimes I get them from the library. This one I really wanted for my collection. I, I usually generally only will spend $15, $20 at most for a children's book. So I probably paid about that. But it's gorgeous, like... You know, even today, if you sent work like this out, I, you're going to get hired. <laughs> I go like, this is gorgeous. To me, it doesn't, it, it does remind me a little bit of a different time period, probably because um, some of it's because of the use of the way the colors are, but, um, but still, it's just the emotion, the feelings that she's captured in the work. Yeah. If she sent it out, she would, she would get work. So, anyways, thanks for listening, guys. I will try to do more story times. I will try to be better about posting things like that that I come across. Um, I'm rebuilding my library of children's books um, that I adore. And I have really loved the work that I see from illustrators from other countries. Don't get me wrong. I love uh, illustrators who do work here in the United States. But I find the perspective and the look. It's just, it's unique because they're from another country. Their life experiences, what they've, you know, how their influences, um, they're different than maybe what we see in our own culture. So it's just great, like, how those influences fit into their own work. But, um, yeah, I'll do another story time for illustrators and uh, do a flip through through a book. And if you like it, um, please like and subscribe. And if you have other books that you would like me to do, I may have them in my collection. I'm happy to make another video about them. So, but thank you for listening. All right. Bye.